Mr. Trek here. This is day two out here in Oregon with the Ford Explorer launch. The 2020 Explorer. We've driven the STs, we've driven the hybrids, the Platinums, the Limiteds, and <laughs> learned a lot. Had a lot of fun out here. But come join us and watch us go fast around the corners and pull trailers. Three trailers. This is just too cool, but this is day two of it. We're going to do a couple of videos so you can kind of get the whole picture because it's, it's a lot to see. So come join us. If you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop-Up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches to keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a short bed. That's the most proper truck there is, is a crew cab short bed. So, protect that window. Yipper. Well, we made it. Made it to somewhere in my Portland, Oregon. Go close to Washington line at the launch of the new Explorer. It's just too cool. We're in a limited, and this is a hybrid model. And we're going to be pulling trailers, of course. Get all the way up to a 4,800 pound trailer. The max towing on the the right model is uh, 5,600 pounds. So we'll see how well that does. These hybrids are spunky though. I've had a hybrid car before, I loved it. And uh, you know, I heard a lot of the police stations are ordering this one and their interceptors with the hybrid. And I am here on this route with... Chris. Christopher Lawrence. You are with Auto... Academics. Academics. Yes. That's right. So there's some giant mountain over here. It's all white capped. I'm guessing it's Mount Hood. I guess it was a volcano. I think that's what that is. But there's a couple mountains out here. If I didn't have the mountains, I wouldn't know what direction I was driving. <laughs> this looks so much longer than the way I remember Explorers. I mean, I've, I've had Explorers. I've had Bronco 2s way back in the 80s. And these all kind of started back in 91. So they've been around a long time. Yeah, right now it's showing an average of 23.8. 23.8 in the city. Okay. And as I recall, these have like a 19 gallon tank. And then, you know, you can get a, up to a 500 mile range. That would give you uh, carry the two, divide by that, somewhere around 25 miles a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> like, is what they're rated at. The hybrid, of course, is going to be higher. But yeah, and the hybrid's got regenerative braking like the normal ones do. And these are rear wheel drive. That's the big news for this year is the yeah. rear wheel drive. And a lot of that had to do with giving you more room inside for the second row seat and pushing the axis as far to the corners as possible. When you do that, it gets you further away, you know, from a, like what a transverse axle would be on a front wheel drive. So the rear wheel drive made everything line up. So you got it to actually transfer case with a clutch on it so it can divide the power up any way it wants to. But, uh, yeah, rear wheel drives back and people, you know, love them for the way they handle. I know my police friends, they love them and they burn the tires right off the EcoBoost ones, <laughs> the interceptors. But, uh, yeah, this is too cool. Right here by Columbia River and the airport. That's really weird driving between all that. And the Air Force keeps flying over. Exactly. We're flying our jets flying over us. Yeah, we got jet <laughs> fighters following us everywhere we go. <laughs> but it's cool. We're going to try out the ST. We're going to do all kinds of tricks tomorrow on some tracks and I'm going to tow some trailers so we're just rolling around Oregon I think we'll be in Washington or something too but uh, yeah it is cool it's cool good looking machine all kinds of room I mean, it is a unibody and I'm usually not driving unibodies but I'm, I'm going to make an exception in Explorer's case because I'm an old Explorer fan from the old days but yeah this one looks awesome in here Oh, and it's got a knob shifter. I gotta make sure. Where's my other camera? I gotta get a picture of the knob shifter. Since the Expedition has it, now I suppose we're gonna have everything from Ford, just like what Ram has. But <laughs> yeah. On camera, he looks way taller. He's shrunk. <laughs> Let's see if I can back into somebody now. Oh, my gosh. I'm bounce off of him. Before I get too lost here, we're still by the Columbian River. So we can see Washington from here in Oregon side. Yes, we're in this. This is the hybrid, and so that means it's a limited. I think it rides kind of like a truck. We'll see uh, what you know, the difference is. I want to see what ST suspension feels like. That gas is substantially higher than what it is in Colorado here in Oregon. 
What is it? I didn't notice. Yeah, it was like over three. It was like oh, wow. three is 15. When I left home, it was, uh, oh my gosh, fill the power. Holy cow, it's almost uncontrollable. Hey, you just burned rubber right there. This is, I love hybrids. They have all that power, 100% torque. It's power. <laughs> it's true power. I smoked the tires yesterday. yesterday. What did you yeah. I smoked the tires in the hybrid yesterday. Yeah. Also, are there I didn't know you did that. Yeah. yeah. Back, back there where we get the snack, there's a big old black mark going down the highway. That was you? Oh, you saw those? We never stopped using the electric motor. I had to power. Yeah. That was awesome. Good. We turned the engine up. This thing just gets up and goes off the line. I love it. That's why the police departments are ordering these puppies. I went to, okay, I'm going straight line, so I'm okay. But no, this rascal is cool, it's comfortable, it's quiet. Of course, it's a hybrid, so you know, you're only hearing the engine once in a while, and it does go a little while on electric only. But it's fun. What I do, I think it's a little bit on the rough side. It feels more like a truck to me than like a luxury SUV. But uh, now this is the hybrid. I don't think the suspension changes to the Platinum or even the XLT. But I could be wrong. We're still learning about this vehicle, but it's comfortable. It's got a lot of room. I mean, you know, that's that's how they did this. It was a rear-wheel drive, so they could push, you know, the axles back further. Not worry about that transverse axle, but it gives you a lot of room in that second row. I mean, it's a lot of room for your leg. But when you go to independent rear suspension, it gives you that flat loading floor, which I think is so cool because. Now, let's turn left up here. I guess yes. Okay. But having that independent suspension, your independent suspension, to me, when you're pulling the trailer, it gives you that Elvis pelvis thing where it moves around a bit more. We'll find out with the trailer tomorrow. Hopefully, and it's going to be a boat trailer because this does not come with a brake controller. you got to add that to it. And the boats come with the brakes on them, the surge brakes, so we'll find out how well it works because they won't have a weight distributing hitch on it. We'll see how it handles a 4,800-pound trailer pounds of trailer. Right. And this is a 2020 10 speed. And that means it's got two captain chairs in the mid row, two kind of captain chairs in the front. So that's four. Do they put three in a little bench in the back or two? Do you know? Uh, I think it's two. Two. That'd be six passengers. And you can probably get a bench in the mid row if you want. It's limited, it's decked out. Because those captain chairs are really comfortable back there. Yes, indeed. Visibility is very good on this. I can see everywhere at the front. But yeah, it's got good rolling power because that's what that uh, electric motor on the back of the engine does. It gives you that instant torque. Which I think, you know, we'll see in the 150 comes out with a hybrid what kind of power it has. I think done right, it could be a really good towing machine using the electric, using the hybrid system on there. This is Ford's first Explorer Hybrid. And it's an all-wheel drive system. It actually has a clutch in the front of the transfer case that controls the front differential. In the back, I don't know if that stays on all the time. You just separate how much power goes to the front. But this all-wheel drive one would be very good up in Colorado. Paddle shifters! I love these things. I got paddle shifters. I can get really wild. I got the side by side as paddle shifters, but I think they're just fun to play with. And these go with the steering wheel. My side by side, they're separate from the steering wheel. But this one, you can really get crazy on a corner and still downshift. <laughs> Shame. Just drove the Blazer about two weeks ago, so I'm trying to remember what that was like and compare it. <clears throat> I say about Explorer is, you know, they did never quit making Explorer. I think they started out in 1990s and 1991 when they went from the Bronco 2 to the Explorer. Enjoyed them back when they were body on frame, even. And they've been a rear wheel drive then, and then they went to a front wheel drive a few years ago. But they look, you know, when you look at it, it's an Explorer. And some other vehicles, like the Blazer, when you look at it, you don't see any relationship to the old Blazers. And I always like that heritage that follows a vehicle. And once again, you are Larry, Larry Queener. Queener, and you are a program manager, You're a supervisor, I've been working on the program engineer. for about three years. Cool. Cross traffic alert. So we are in the Platinum. This is the high end. Well, this S the ST is probably more expensive, isn't it? Is all that um, they're, performance stuff? No, they're uh, pretty close. This is yeah. the, the top of the price point. So we'll see if this one rides better. Because I thought the ST rode very well for performance oh, for the vehicle, yeah. but I didn't think the uh, the uh, hybrid did. 
and it's got those low rolling resistance tires. So maybe related to that, I was going to uh, try to interview the Michelin guys, but I thought, it, of course, maybe that I started with it on a rougher road. I don't know. There were some potholes I hit. Yeah, we with had it. some maybe that was it. different roads and different terrains. So this is probably a premium Michelin on this Platinum. I would imagine. Yeah, uh, I think this one's got the 21s on it. Are the Michelin's not Pirelli's or is it Pirelli's? I think they're in the Pirelli's. Pirelli? I can check. Yeah, Pirelli are more the expensive. These are the 21s. These are the 21s. The biggest tire you can see. You feel like a rapper in this, you know. Like, yeah. Cheech and Chong here. Well, these what are the the, <laughs> optional. Are these more expensive than a Michelin? Um, I think it's an optional wheel upgrade from the 20 to the 21. Okay, so it probably is a, a more expensive wheel than a Michelin. It's an upgrade over a Michelin. It's the wheel and tire combo. Okay, okay. So you're not really going to tell me the answer. Yeah, I'm it's just, a premium tire. You're, you're, okay. it, it is a premium tire. Yeah. Okay, it's premium tire. Now, these are not towing mirrors, but they're not bad. I mean, is that trailer 7 wide or 8 feet wide or 8 foot 1 wide? Do you know how wide it is? Uh, I do not know how wide that is. I just know it weighs 3,500 pounds. Okay, 3,500 pounds, which is the, I mean, that's even less than what a hybrid would pull. And you got a brake control, an aftermarket brake control in there, because these don't come with, I don't think it's even an option on these, is it, to get a brake control? Not an and on a Ranger, you can, it's a dealer installed option on a Ranger. Now, these are pre wired with the seven way connector, so once you get right. to uh, the Platinum or the ST, uh, trailer tow is standard. Okay. So that wiring that goes under the dash is over in this corner. Usually, it's in the right corner. This is in yeah, the left it's, corner. Yeah, that's where they chose that's to mount it, it with the okay. removable plate, so that okay. when the event is done, they can replace it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Okay, thirty-five pounds, and we're going to try tow haul mode in each one of these trailers. It's about four clicks to the right, and you'll be in tow haul mode. Okay, click the normal, eco, sport. Tow haul mode. Yes. We'll see. Is there any big hills we can go on? Because I always like to see how the tow haul mode works. Um, coming in and out of here is a couple, a couple of good ones. And yeah. <clears throat> you'll see some uh, descent as we leave. Okay. Which is where I find oh, tow we'll haul being most helpful is engine braking. In well, this is more of a transmission braking, grade shifting tow haul yeah. mode. Yeah. I still translate that into red. Yeah. Oh, look at this Look at those squinty eyes. It looks like Roy Rogers. Look at the headlights on that. They're above the headlights. Those must be like running lights. The signature lighting. Is that what that's called? Yes, sir. Signature lighting. It's gorgeous. Cool. Yeah, it looks like a Lincoln a little bit. Huh? Okay, where is that trailer? I keep going straight. I can't. Let's see. This body must be, what, five feet wide? Because the mirrors, I can't even. And that trailer looks like it's, it might be a six foot wide. I know they're not towing the mirrors, but I mean. Uh, and this size of a vehicle on a 5,000, 5,600 pound trailer, you probably wouldn't tow real wide, even though a lot of RVs are eight and a half feet wide. So a typical RV, you'd be, you need some mirrors extended, mirror extended. What's the gain set on this? Because it doesn't feel like much. Uh, you shouldn't need much. They, uh, they set it up pretty good. It's a pretty light trailer. But you know, on a new trailer, you haven't burnished the brakes in. So you got to usually go a little higher to get braking because, you know, they're slick and they have it burnished in where the whole drum is level around the brake pads. They, um, so I always do that on the trailers. I, I set it up. I turn it up the game. Yeah, they, they, they cooked them pretty okay. pretty good the other day. Yeah, you worry it breaks out about half of half the brakes is gone before you get a burning right. So it's, it's one of those pain in the butts with drum electric brakes. The short little wheelbase trader just kind of bounces around back there like a basketball. Well, this would be a good off road trader. You can go anywhere with this. Yeah, and get if, if you notice the setup on the hitch, yeah. we had to raise the ball up. Yeah, so you could actually go in the back country. To the right. To the right. Get it. Get it. And this is, a, this is a three liter. Yes. EcoBoost twin turbo. Yes, sir. So it's got some soup. It does. 365, 380. Wow, 365 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque. And I really like the way these steer. I think it's nice, tight steering. Pretty comfortable with these. Just the way you're in. Toe hole kicking in on the descent. My, oh, yeah. Well, that, to the right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it did pull it down a little bit. I didn't watch the RPMs, which I should have been watching the RPM. See what it did, because that wasn't a whole lot of a drop. Now, see, you got to tell me these before I get to them. What's that? What the drops? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> Starting to worry me there a little. So how long have you been working with Ford? Uh, about 26 years. Holy cow. Everybody you talk to is 20 to 30 years. Nobody ever wants to leave the place when it looks. Uh, it is a good place to work. Yeah. I've uh, made my way through electrical chassis and body and into program management. Yeah. Beautiful scenery. Oh, this is gorgeous. You don't find this in Deerwood. No. Yeah, this is nothing for this, even though, you know, if 5,600 pounds is a high end and this is a low end, yeah, you can't even feel it's back there. It's got a little bit of frontal area. Yeah, yeah. A little weird, though, you know, the Ranger is, is similar size, maybe even smaller, with the 2.3 turbo, and it's rated... Uh, 7,500 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, this is a couple thousand pounds below that. Of course, that's a body on frame and all that, but, huh. I figure this is a pretty stout machine. I would have rated it higher, but I guess that's the marketing guys decide what the average person pulls and they aim for that target. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that, that's in the, uh, you got your ride trade offs. Right? Yeah, yeah. Set it up for 7,500 pounds, or you want to set it up for 5,000 and have a nice ride. And given the, the customer usage profile on towing, uh, yeah, and the Ranger's got leaf springs. This has got what is it, shock over coil or whatever it is? Uh, and yeah, you have the integral suspension, the, it's essentially a five link with the, the integral link. Oh, the, yeah, in the back that provides the uh. Oh, it's gave, a five wide stabilizer bar and then that trailing arms. Yeah, it, it uh, we got the H arms uh, in the back. Yeah. Okay. Power! Whoa! Yeah! We got right up to 5,000 RPM real quick. Well, this has got a paddle shifter so I can see what gear I'm in, maybe. Yep. Oh, there. Got me right up. There we go. Here we go. Sweet light. We got all the cameras. This one, this trailer I walked off, it's about 33 feet back there. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it's a good one. It's a pretty good long trailer. Another 2020 Explorer. Now this is which model? This is a Platinum model. Another Platinum. With 21 inch wheels. Okay, so we just jumped out of a Platinum? Yes, sir. So we all we're driving is Platinums? We're really into Platinums. And we got two Platinums and a Hybrid. So you guys are really showing us the Platinums. <laughs> I thought maybe we'd see an XLT, uh, uh, we've SRT. Got, yep, uh, we've got XLTs in the uh, with trailers the non, on non trailer. Oh, uh, with the 2.3. Yeah. yeah. So again, we're in a three-liter EcoBoost twin turbo. And what's this trailer weigh? This one is 4,800 pounds. So this is the heaviest one we have today. Yes. 4,800 pounds. Okay. How come you guys didn't go to 5,600 pounds? And this one does not have braking drugs. It's got surge brakes on the boat, right? Correct. Got surge brakes, okay. Just yeah, everybody's okay. Yeah. It's Hanging pain, off man. the boats. I've been doing this forever. Let's see. Now, the lights, I'm going to turn them on. No, no. Oh, yeah. That way I can see my trailer. The boat lights are on. So I know it's plugged in, hopefully. You know, I always like <laughs> that feeling of brakes and lights. But, oh, well. Okay, yeah, big light bar. I like this. Hands of lights back there. Cool. We got a gas. I never looked at gas gauges on these things. I figured that was your job, but I don't know. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, actually, the hybrid will be very similar to the 2.3. If 
you start looking at horsepower and torque. Yeah. Well, the 2.3 is a standard engine in most of your models. Almost be nice to... And is that 2.3? Does that tow 5,600 pounds? Or? That tows uh, 5,300 pounds. Oh, 53. That's the middle one. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that would have been kind of nice to have one of each rating. You know, the hybrid at 5,000, 2.3 at 5,300. And then, of course, these big platinums or the ST at 5,600 pounds of trailer. Okay, tow haul mode. Did I get it in tow haul mode? Probably didn't. Yakin, Eco, Sport, there you tow go. haul. Okay, going that right. way. Yeah, I was going to see if I could tell the difference coming down that hill. Okay, so this is going to accelerate. Very similar. A little more weight because it was pulling about 3,500 pounds last run. So we're going a little over 1,000 this run, 1,300 more weight. Oh, here we're going downhill. Let's see what this does. Tow haul mode. See if it's enough from downhill to, to grade shift. Where's my attack? There's my attack. Running about 1,800 RPMs. I'm going to have to brake because we are coming down. There we go. It shifted up to I was going to tell you it was going to downshift. It's not going to go quick. <laughs> Trying you to get, get ahead get of that quick. one for you. Yeah, you got to get quick on this stuff. Now we're getting in traffic. Must be everybody's going home for the day. This is pretty wide. Is this is this trailer fender to fender eight and a half feet? Uh, it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, I mean, what's about uh, one hundred and two? Well, 102 is is eight and a half feet. Is 102? You knew that. I saw the camera still up there, so you're good. Oh, you can see it. Uh, coming around the corner. Oh. So. fine if all you pull is boats. That's the point I was making to my good ranger friends is it needs to be a factory option but now it's a dealer option. Is this a dealer option or just you're out of luck as an accessory? Yeah. Um, you ranger can get the, the standard um, Takancha module through your dealer or through uh, okay. It's not like a Ford labeled. Wow. So this is the heaviest trailer we're going to get. The other one is 4,300 pounds? Or what was it? The other one is 4,500. 4,500, okay. And this is 4,800. So I can tell with this that it does grade shift. I mean, it would have to really be in the mountains to see what, it, you know, how, yeah. how good it is. But I'm glad, I was really glad to see you put tow home with me. You got seven modes. You could have scratch your nose mode in here. You got so many modes. I thought they couldn't put that many modes in it. They had to take some out if they put more in. So seven is seven the maximum amount of modes? Um, I don't know that there's a limit, but uh, as far as utilization, you've got uh, just about every potential drive mode you've got, right? You've got the slip rate. Yeah. You've got Eco Coach, which is new. You've got your uh, trail mode. Yeah. Just similar to Mud and Rut. And then you've 
got your uh, tow haul. I saw a snow mode in there too. Yep. Is there a sand S mode deep, like the deep snow or yeah. deep sand and snow? Yeah. And Is there snow. two of those? Because there was a... no, that was just the one. So that's that's a combined <coughs> mode. And then you've got sport. Yeah, sport mode is fun. Of course, this is the same engine that's in the ST, but the ST has more horsepower and torque, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the ST, it really kicks butt. It's a fun rig to drive. It's more of a luxury. Yeah, with the ST, you've got the uh, upgraded brake options with the yeah. sport tuned suspension. Yeah, I like that suspension. I, that was, I, I liked it, actually. <clears throat> so the next one we drive is the hybrid. Right, which will be uh, limited. Yeah. Now we're in a 2024 Explorer. And this has to be a limited edition because it is a hybrid. Hybrid. All the hybrids are limited. Maybe next year I'll put it in some of the cheaper vehicles. Like, you know, a lot of that stuff happens, but a lot of times some new technology comes out, they put it in the high end vehicles. Some kind of pattern there. And this is, a, you say, a 23 foot trailer? Uh, yes. The other one was like 30 something, but. 33. At 33, so this is a 10 foot shorter, and this one only weighs 4,500 pounds. And this uh, hybrid is rated to 5,000 pounds, so we're 500 pounds off our max. Of course, you figure tongue weight and you know, a couple of hefty people. You're not hefty, but I am. I'm a heavy duty reporter, so you got some weight there. I keep forgetting to do the tow mode. Where are you, tow mode? Fourth. There you go. Cool. So I want to see how this hybrid. This hybrid has the. <clears throat> is it the? What is the size of the engine? It's, it's a 3.3. 3.3. Okay. No, no turbo. Yeah. And it's got the electric motor behind the engine. Rear wheel drive. You know, guys, we rear wheel drive years ago. I don't remember what year the last one was, but I mean, I know it's a new series. We switched in 11. We switched in 11, okay. So now we're back, we're going back in time, and rear wheel drive, which I like the handling characteristics, especially when it's an all wheel drive, so you're not losing that. What's that? Downshift now. Oh, oh, it did, did you see it? 2000, I gave you okay. a second in there. Oh man, but you gave me I had one, give me two seconds. That was like 25, we'd go to 2500. I just, oh, I had to feel it before you. We're going to find some mountains, and we're going to really do some. To, some great towing, but no, this. I mean, look at acceleration. This thing flies. Wow, we're going to clear up the 6,500 RPM before it shifted. What our gear we're in? Let's see if I can figure that out. Use your right pedal. Okay, yeah. right pedal. Oh, right pedal. Yeah, there's fourth. I love that where I can see the gear I'm in. And paddle shifters. What else can you want in a vehicle, man? This is cool. Go to the fifth. Yeah, we gotta find us a mountain now. See just how well this does going downhill with grade shifting and tow all mode. But yeah, this is nice. This is one loading puppy. Beautiful seats. These are those captain's chairs, two rows of them. So everybody has plenty of room. I'll show you some pictures of that because this is one of those interiors that does great things with a camera. As you can see, the black just kind of all blends together, but these are like a camel color. So it'll stand out. We're gonna do that. But yeah, this puppy, I just wish I knew. Now there's a mode on here, I'm sure some of these modes, it shows me a fuel mileage, isn't there? Do you know how to get to that? Um, yes, we can thumb through the screens. Remind me on the way back, because that would be cool to watch to see what it is getting. Of course, we're going downhill now, it's not going to be of any importance, but I'm going back uphill. Remind me, we'll do that, we'll find that. Watch the electronics, I don't know how accurate they are, but sometimes they're pretty close. In the old days, they were always off 10%, but now sometimes the electronic fuel mileage meter is pretty close. 90% humidity and 85 degrees. Man, my mustache is sweating, I tell you. Actually, it's warming up. We're up to 90 now. Oh my gosh, 90 degrees. we got to find this a lemonade stand. <laughs> this is so cool. If you don't use the paddle shifter, 
if you don't put it in manual mode, it goes automatic to automatic, and that's cool. I like that. Yeah, this is this is a fun machine, and these little hybrids they get up and go. Because you know that what extra the 44 torque that you get from the motor, the electric motor, it's instant. It's 100 percent power. It's right there. Yeah, and then you add that too. Uh, a 3.3, that's what this is? 3.3. That's a weird number, 3.3. I don't think, I 3.5, I can remember, 3.3. I got to think about that. But it's a V6 without the turbos. So you got pretty good power between the two of them. What is it? Uh, what's the worst power between the two of them? Is it 130? Uh, 318. 318, okay. See, that's respectable. 318 with 336. Yeah, 336 foot pounds of torque. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those numbers. Pull a 5,000 pound trailer at the max, and that's very usable. And we're only pulling 4,500 pounds now. This handles well. I mean, you know, there's only a couple companies that make weight distributing hitches for a boat for a surge brake system. So we don't have weight distributing hitch on here, and I think it's generally not required to get to 5,000 pounds. So we're we're all legal and all that. We got a surge brake system on the boat, so we do have trailer brakes. But, I mean, it's not swaying. Of course, boats are pretty balanced. But this is a two-axle boat trailer, right? Yes. So that's always the nicest ones to tow down the road. <clears throat> so, no sway. Nothing wrong with this. You know, I like this. For this, the weight class that this is in, I think it's a good towing machine. Vehicle's also equipped with the uh, enhanced stability control. So with the trailer sway... Uh, mitigation is 100%. Yeah, that is that's that's good stuff. I mean, the sway control, I really like it on trucks because they're not balanced all the time. You get empty and loaded, where an SUV like this is pretty balanced. Right. I mean, this is almost it's almost equal front and rear axle, just a little more to the front. But uh, yeah, this is a very safe type of vehicle. You just feel good driving it. You're not you know worried about it. Cause some vehicles you got to really hang on the steering wheel when you have a trailer in it. You gotta do a lot of things with weight distributing hitches and sway control and everything else, but <clears throat> this feels good. Now, does this have adaptive cruise control? It does. I yeah. love it's my favorite option of all time. And Ford does most of those where they work with trailers. They'll actually turn on the trailer brake and all that and the train and the uh, lights. Does this do that? It does not. We do okay. not offer the, the pickup brake. It does that, uh, yeah. I wanna check the screen for fuel mileage. What we get going back to the hotel was it five miles to the hotel, ten miles? Yeah, it's not uh, about ten miles. Yeah. And I guess I probably should go through modes and go to eco if I really want to proceed. Yeah, you probably, you probably want to stay in tow hall. Okay. Actually, you'll have to reset it since we shut it off. Yeah. Oh, so now I gotta go back over here. Well, it shows 6.6, 6.9. But tow hall mode at these speeds would be higher RPM. Yes, Eco it would be. be a lower RPM. It would be. I mean, play puppy. We're going uphill, so it should be a pretty accurate thing. There's Eco. Okay. <coughs> it almost feels like it has that steering assist on. Is that a button or is that a program in the screen? Uh, that'll be a, a screen selectable. Yeah. The, uh, the center's back there. I don't like them. I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, it helps from some areas, but... You, you have the option to yeah, choose with I, assist or without. I like to shut it off because it seems like it's trying to fight me for who's in charge of the control. Yeah, that's the uh, traffic sign recognition. Yeah, that is too cool. I'm used to looking at it for it in the, uh, right. yeah, the navigation screen. <coughs> and that's done off the navigation where this is actually done off the camera, isn't it? It's both. Yeah. It's a combination of navigation and camera. GPS in here. Pumped all the way to 11.7. Yeah, I'm only 500 pounds away from maximum weight. That's probably not bad. And, you know, I'm guessing that this thing will get between 20 and 25 when it's the EPA releases all that. And you guys release it. Because if it goes 500 miles on 18 gallon, what's that figure out to be? It's over 25 miles a gallon. That's what it is. 
Mr. Truck here. We have got, I guess you'd call it breaking news. Some of it's rumors, some of it's true. But we looked at all the hybrid information and it really is cool with the 10-speed, with the electric motor that has 44 horsepower torque and all the things that they've done to the hybrid uh, that could easily transfer to the F-150. I think it will. I mean, that's the transmission and that's probably everything else involved to do that, to, to make the 150 hybrid, which is coming in a couple years. They'll probably put maybe a 3.5 EcoBoost or something in there instead of the 3.3 that it has now. So they'll do some of that, but we kind of know uh, the, the architecture, how it's going to look when it comes out. And another thing we found out, that they are, they have configured what you could call a PTO on the hybrid. So on that hybrid that will make come out in the 150, it could be a hybrid with the generator coming off a of PTO. So this is the capability of, you know, think about it, a generator, PTO driven, all the power you're going to have with the hybrid. I mean, you, you have your own electrical plant, you go out and do some welding. But all that may be coming in a couple of years where we're trying to keep, keep track of that story and see how it develops. Right now we haven't confirmed it, it's kind of a rumor, but that's kind of what I think, that's where things are going.